Do you want to create a booking page where customers, partners and suppliers can book directly into your calendar, avoiding that email tennis going back and forth, trying to find out the ideal slot? I'm the Productivity Coach and today I show you how. Hi, I'm Stuart Riddell, the Productivity Coach, and I'm a Modern Work Customer Success Manager at Microsoft. And today, before we go any further, make sure that you like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell on this YouTube video so you get notified when I post any new content. So today I'm looking at how you can set up your own personalized booking page, which you can make available to anybody uh, to be able to book directly into your diary. I'm sure we've all been there where we've uh, been talking to either a customer or a partner, a supplier or something like this, and we're trying to find the ideal time to meet and we're going back and forth. Now there's loads of different solutions you can use to do that, but sometimes you just wanna be able to give somebody that booking page and just say, right, have a look, here's when I'm available, find the ideal slot for you and you can just book it straight in. So that's what I'm gonna show you today. So let's have a look at this. So we're gonna be using bookings for this, which is part of Office 365 and you already got this available to you. So here I'm on office.com and I don't have bookings here on the left hand side. So you need to click on all apps and then we're gonna click on bookings here. Okay, uh, now this is, the, this, this is the first time you've done this. It'll take a little bit longer uh, just to load in. So I'm going to say get it now because I've uh, not done this previously. And I'm going to add a booking calendar. Okay, and then it says tell us about your business because it's designed for businesses. So I'm going to just call it Stuart's Booking Calendar. And I'm going to click continue. Okay, and again, this will just take a moment just to load in. Okay, so, so there is actually a brand new experience coming in for booking. So it will prompt you. So click try it now. If you don't get that prompt, there's a little switch up in the top right hand corner, which you can do. So um, this slightly changes the look of it, um, but this is how bookings is gonna look going forward. Okay, and this is gonna talk me through just getting started. So let's just get rid of some of those prompts and I can show you. So I'm gonna be starting here in the settings um, page here. So uh, here, this looks at the staff who are available. So you might have different ones, but for me, I'm just gonna have one at the moment. Then on the services page, that talks about which services you have available. And this is where we're gonna set up different meeting lengths. We've got a custom field setting area where we can ask specific question. Then we've got settings around the booking page and how that appears. And then we've got the core business information. Um, so I'm going to start actually in the custom fields because it asks you for name, uh, email address and phone number, but you might want to have some new uh, other pieces of information. So I'm going to add a custom field here, which says, what would you like to talk about? Okay. And I'm going to save that because otherwise I don't know what the meeting's about. And I'm going to add another custom field um, when I'm going to say, what is your organization name? Okay, I could possibly get that from the email address, but um, it's useful just to have that specifically asked. So we set up those custom fields um, and then we can apply them uh, on different types of things. So here I'm on the services here and as a default, it's got this initial consult for one hour. So I'm actually going to rename that initial consult. and I'm just going to call this a 60 minute chat. Okay, then we've got a little description there that we can add in um, an address. So we're not going to use an address. Uh, oh, let me get rid of that. Oh, let me I'll ju let me just uh, allow that. There we go. Sorry. Uh, and then whether it's going to be an online meeting. So I'm going to click online and then it will set up as a Teams meeting. So because it's a 60 minute chat, I'm actually going to set that up as 55 minutes um, so that we've got some time. And then I'm going to add in a buffer time at the end of that. Um, which I'm going to make that to be five minutes. So then that just makes up the hour. It makes the calendar cleaner. Okay. Obviously there's going to be not going to be a price or anything like this. Um, so that's what my 60 minute session is going to look like. Um, now we've got things like the availability options. So I'm not going to change this. You can change it specifically for uh, different types of things, but I'm actually going to use the default scheduling and I'm going to then show you how you can set up your calendar to restrict when people can book. Um, assign staff so we've only got me uh, so I'm just going to make that available for me then what fields am I going to ask so I don't really need to ask the customer address um, I could leave the notes I'm going to leave the notes in there uh, but if I wanted to I could just switch that off but I am going to make sure I'm going to ask the custom fields for organization name and what we'd like to talk about and I'm making both of those required so that they can't book without that 
Then for each service, you can actually customize what the reminders and the notifications are going to be. So um, you could say where well, we've got email reminders. So this says a day before. So I'm going to just edit this one. Um, and there's different ones there for the customer or the or, or you. So I'm going to say an hour before that, send a reminder to the customer. And let's just write a, a nicer message in there. So I just a reminder that we are meeting today. Looking forward to seeing you. Brilliant. And save changes. Um, and you can remove those if you don't want to, etc. But I'm going to save changes now on that appointment type. So that is my 60 minute session. Um, but I might want to have a shorter option. So maybe just a 30 minute chat. So I'm going to stick in here, uh, 30 minute chat, and we'll just set this up from scratch. So we're going to include, um, an online meeting cause we want it to, to have a teams meeting automatically. So switch that switch across and again, same as before, I'm going to do 25 minutes with a five minute buffer on the other side. Okay. Nothing here needed. Um, again, availability, I'm not going to change. We're going to set that up centrally in a moment. Um, just going to be me. Okay. Custom fields. I'm going to turn off the customer address and then we're going to say both of those, um, are required. And again, I'm not going to change the reminders or notifications, but I can do that there. Okay. So I've set up my services. Um, so they will now be available. Um, again, staff. It's only going to be me. Um, you know, you might have a scenario where we've got lots of different people, but I'm actually going to set up um, my availability for that. So that tab there shows me when I'm available. But if I click on to edit staff here, I can pick uh, different things. So there's a switch here that says use business hours. So I'm not going to use business hours and that gives me the ability to edit that because I want to be quite specific. So on a Monday, I don't want anybody to book before nine. So I'm going to say 10 o'clock. And then what I'm going to do is allow them to book up until 12. So I can, I can keep my lunch free. And again, I don't want them to book too late in the day. So I'm going to say 1 p.m. until maybe four. And that, and that gives me the opportunity to uh, do my admin. So again, same for Tuesday. Um, I'm going to set that up 10 till 12 then do one till four. Okay. And it's worth spending the time just to kind of sort all of this out, uh, because otherwise you'll find that somebody will be able to book into your diary, um, at inconvenient times and things like this. So if you set it up and spend time just getting this right up front, and then it saves you a lot of, a, a lot of hassle down the line. Um, if you end up with a diary that's too full or some kind of really early morning, uh, or late, late, um, sessions as well. Okay. So Thursday, 10 till 12 and then one till four. And then for Friday, I'm going to do something different because I don't want, I want to use that as my admin catch up. So I'm not going to allow anybody to publicly book into my calendar on that. And then I can click save changes. Perfect. So that's now set that up for me. I can see what my availability is, what services I've got etc uh, now business information just has some basic details here um, you can include a business logo now if this were for you for your own personal booking page you might put um, like your face there like a profile picture um, I believe the, the new booking the new version of booking so there's like an old style booking page and a new one um, I don't think the new one has that logo on but um, so we're going to move on and we're going to configure the booking page so maybe we have an option here that only people in your organization book onto your page or anyone. So putting it straight out there onto the internet. Then a whole load of other settings here, like stopping searching engines, uh, being able to do that. I'm going to use the new version booking style on my page. So, um, so that it, it feels in line with everything else. Okay. You can have things like a data consent. If you need to um, allow people to consent to storing that information. Um, and then this is quite a good one to look at is your lead time. So, you know, how, how far ahead can people book? So, um, or sorry, what's the latest people can book? So I don't like to have anything um, booked less than 48 hours. So I've got a couple of days to prepare and you could say 30 days in advance might be the longest or 90 days. Um, if you don't, if you're booking me beyond 90 days, I don't really know why you're doing that. 
But and then we've got email notifications here. So send a meeting invite to the customer so they get uh, an invite into their Outlook. OK, you can do things like customize your page here. So um, what are the colors going to look like? What's the branding going to going to be there? Um, so let's just pick one. I'm going to pick this red one. OK, um, and then region and time zone. So um, I'm in the UK, so I'm going to set that to be a London time zone. So UTC plus zero, that's it. Uh, OK, and then you've got this check that says always show time in business time zone, which you probably don't want. You want it to be uh, left in the local time zone of the person who's uh, who's making the booking. OK, so then that will give you this link here for your booking page. So if I click on that, then this is what it looks like. Ta -da. There we go. So you can see that I've got my services, my 60, my 30 minute chat. Um, and then you can go beyond that. So let's, in fact, let's copy that. Let's open a private browsing session and we'll show you what it looks like and what the process looks like for somebody um, to book in who isn't logged in or anything here. Okay, so looking exactly the same. So what do we want? Do we either want to like have a 60 minute chat or a 30 minute chat so they can just pick that. So I want a 30 minute chat. Oh, I've left, I've left a setting on. So it says there select stuff. I'm gonna show you how you can turn that off in a moment. Um, and then when, so we can see the dates and we can see the times when people can book in. So let's say that we're gonna book on the 20th and I'm gonna do that at 11 a.m. Then your details, so Stuart Ridout, my email, and I'm just gonna blur that out so that uh, I'll keep my work email private, there we go. Uh, you can add phone numbers and stuff like this. So what's your organization name? So this is mandatory, so Microsoft. And what would you like to talk about? How you implemented bookings. Lovely. And then I click the book button down the bottom and uh, we get this message and it'll send me a confirmation message as well. So let's start off and look how that would look for me as the person who's going to be receiving that booking, the owner of the calendar. So you can see here in my Outlook, um, I've got a notification that's come in that says a 30 minute chat um and it's given me all of the stuff i need to do now if i pop over to my calendar okay and go on to the 20th which is when that session was then there you go on the far right i've got that 30 minute chat there it's put the name of the person who you're with it's got that teams button to jump straight in now if i maximize that up as well you can see all of the information that they've put in is here. So what's your organization name, what you'd like to talk about, etc. So it gives you the context. Now, if I switch over and have a look at my Microsoft email account, and there you go, you can see that I've received a booking, um, the, uh, a meeting request. So there you go, I can click accept on that and then that will go in my, uh, in my calendar as a customer. Um, okay, so I did, I had the thing on there where it said, who do you want to talk to, which I don't really want to have this select staff thing on there because um, it's only for me. So, okay, <clears throat> I'm going to go to the staff page here. No, sorry, I'm going to the booking page, apologies. Um, and I'm looking in the default scheduling um, policy there. And there was a, a switch there that said, allow customers to choose a specific person for the booking. So I don't want that on. That's what I meant to do. Okay, and I click save. And then if I just pop back here and refresh it, then you can see on my 60 minute chat here, it goes straight to the calendar. And I don't pick who the person is I'd like to book with. That would be useful if you were looking at a, at a hairdressers or something like that. So that's really, really simply how you can set up a booking page. The great thing is you don't need to buy anything new. You don't need to um, kind of allow any other third party services to get access to your mailbox, which might be uh, contravening any kind of data policies that you've got within your organization. Um, and you're keeping it all within Microsoft. So hopefully you found that really, really useful. Um, if you did, please tell someone about it. Uh, and again, I've said it already, but make sure you go onto the YouTube channel and we like, subscribe and click that notification bell so you get notified when any new content comes in. But other than that, hopefully you found that useful and I'll see you again on another video.